the first of a three-game series, the Pills and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Going for the Phillies, Danny Cox, last year's Cy Young Award winner, Doug Gray back for Pittsburgh. Harry Callis with Rich Ashburn, Andy Musser. The Phillies have won 13 straight, looking for a Phillies record of 14 consecutive wins tonight. But, Andy, there's also another streak, and it's not a good one. The Phillies against the Pirates. This is the one team the Phillies have not beaten this year. And, of course, if you go back and add up the games through last year, it's 0 for the last 12. Six this year, six last year. So when you look at that on its own basis, the Phillies are also due to win. Phillies have been getting excellent starting pitching in this streak. 14 straight games where the starter has gone six or more innings. Uh, Pittsburgh starter, the, the Cy Young Award winner last year, has not pitched like Cy Young this year. No, he, uh, he got off to a very bad start. You have to give him credit. He's come on lately. Uh, the Pirates have been scoring uh, quite a few runs for him. His ERA is still up over three, which is still not bad. But, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to say what will happen in this series. You know, uh, I think this is a better Phillies team than the Pirates have seen this year. And possibly the Pirates aren't quite as strong as they were earlier in the year. Phillies tonight will be trying to make modern history with their 14th consecutive win. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after these messages. Well, just played against Pittsburgh. He's up in the batting race now. One strike to Bonilla, who's hitting 295 overall, hitting 307 left-handed, 275 right-handed. And slight runner at first base with two outs. Nothing, nothing. We're in the bottom of the first. Slight will run on a cage and he's rolling eight bases out of ten attempts. With it, it's one and one. Kansas City has shut out the Yankees game one of a twenty-eight doubleheader at New York. Kevin Apier winning his tenth game. Johnson lost it. Jose Partable hit his twenty-fourth home run of the year for Kansas City in that ball game. Hit foul left field side. One ball and two strikes to Bonilla. Leading the Chicago White Sox first game with doubleheader 10 to 3 in the bottom of his sixth. Cecil Fielders at his 33rd. Base hit right field. Van Slyke will end up at third base. And Pittsburgh has runners at first and third with two outs. It will bring on the red hot Barry Bonds. Bonds coming off a two-homer game, including the game winner in the 11, and he is getting a standing ovation. You know, if there were runners on second and third here and two outs, you'd walk this guy intentionally. Hey, I'd walk him anyway with runners on first and third. Might be all the more reason because he has that hole now with that runner on first and pitch to the next guy. On the inside corner for a called strike to Bonds, nothing in one. Bonds second in the league in on base percentage at 400, fifth in the league in slugging percentage, second in the league in RBIs behind only Will Clark. Clark with 85, Bonds with 83. In the air to center field, should be easy for Lenny Dykstra, and that will retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two left. And at the end of one, it's a nothing-nothing game. Our 
pause for station identification on the Phil's television network. WTXF, Fox 29 in Philadelphia. It's off for the Phillies here in the second. Murph hitting at 249. 14 home runs. He's knocked in 55. Way outside with a slider. One and nothing. He's starting just about every hitter is Dray back with a breaking ball. Nothing, nothing. We're in the second. He offered at her. It's one ball and one strike. Graybeck had one previous start this year against the Phillies. Pitched to no decision. Two and one. Ray Beck, a 29-year-old from Victoria, Texas. Yes, with that one, three and one. In 156 innings this year, Ray Beck has 89 strikeouts and 48 walks. Just out of the reach of Jay Bell, a base hit for Dale Murphy. So Murphy is a leadoff base runner here in the second. Throws second hit off Drayback, and that'll bring on Charlie Hayes. Batting six, third baseman, number eight, Charlie Hayes. Just, just past that diving Jay Bell. He almost got leather on it. Charlie Hayes batting at 218. Lifetime, he's had one hit off Grayback and 10 at bats. It was a home run. Charlie has a seven game hitting streak alive, hitting 387 in the last seven. One strike to it. Charlie, since being reinstalled at third base, has really been playing well. Made a superb play to end the game last night on a ground ball off the bat of Marquise Grissom. Nothing and one to Charlie Hayes. <laughs> Missed the slider, nothing and two. Giving Charlie a couple good pitches to hit. Charlie's kind of uh, cut down his swing against Dre back here, which is probably a pretty good idea. He hasn't been able to make contact yet. Missing wide with a slider. It's one ball and two strikes. Nothing, nothing. We're in the second. Dale Murphy at first base and nobody out. Slider just missed a tad wide for a ball. It's two and two. It's a tough pitch to lay off. That slider that starts over the plate and breaks a little bit outside. Really tough when you're behind on the count. Balls and two strikes to Charlie Hayes. Well, Murphy not a big lead, but had to scurry to get back. Two and two to Hayes. Pops a foul behind Pittsburgh's dugout. It's out of play. It's still two balls and two strikes. Charlie Hayes 
looking down at third base coach Larry Boa. Probably swings through too many pitches to put anything on here. Murphy holds. Another foul ball. It's still two and two. Terry Mulholland gave the Phillies nine strong innings last night, extending the winning streak to 13 consecutive games. Matching a modern record for the Phillies. They accomplished also in 1977. That's the last time you can remember a game that had nine players on each side, and that's it. Yeah, no substitutions, no pinch hitters. Ground ball, second base, should be two and is. Lean to Bell to Merced. Hayes grounds into a 4 6 3 double play. Two outs and no base runners, and the batter will be Warren Dini. Mickey is hitting at 239. He's hit Pittsburgh well this year, five for 11 in his appearances against the Pirates. One ball and no strikes to Mickey Warren Dini. Two outs and no base runners here in the second. It's a nothing nothing game. Brown ball to Bobby Bonilla. He guns out Warren Dean. Phillies are retired in the second. No runs, one hit, no errors, none left. We go to the bottom of the second. It's a nothing nothing game. <laughs> never need Pearl's free breakage guarantee. But you never know. Only Pearl will repair or replace your broken glasses free for one full year, no matter how they break. Have you got your pearls on? We really missed you, man. Really. You were left all night long. It was your kind of thing. You made me laugh. It was so embarrassing. I haven't seen him in years. That was great. He still cracks me out. I'll tell you one more time, because I think I liked it. I just did that. Well, we just did there, yeah. No one helps you share the feelings like AT&T Long Distance. I wish you could have been here, too. AT&T, all you need to reach out. Fill it up. Ultra 94. <laughs> when your car's your baby, it deserves a gasoline as special as Sunoco Ultra 94. Because only Ultra gives you the highest octane under the sun with great detergency. 94, Ultra 94. Now get a free American Wildlife glass with each Ultra 94 fill-up through August 28th. Four different glasses to collect, so start your set today. Offer differs in New Jersey and Rhode Island. Bottom half of the second, it's a nothing-nothing game. Our trivia question of the night. Who holds the record of hitting the most home runs in his last Major League season? Major League mark for most homers in his last big league season. How many was it? About 29. What do you mean about? I said how about? Oh. 29. Home run by this man in his last season. Cecil SB has good speed. Switch hitter. One ball and one strike to him. Cecil SB was hitting 312 at Buffalo. 27 doubles, 10 triples, two homers, and 43 RBIs prior to being called up. In the air to left, Chamberlain has to backtrack. It's over his head, a ground rule double. But Chamberlain playing shallow for Cecil SB, and SB drove it over his head. For a ground rule double, he's a leadoff base runner. And he 
doesn't. He just swings very shallow. He plays a shallow left field. That ball was hit pretty well. A high curve ball. Ball was in the air a long time, but it didn't really come close to the fence. But Russ had no shot at it. Here's Don Slott. He's hitting at 229, and Danny Cox and the Phillies middle infielders better keep an eye on Espy because he is a base stealer. Maybe not now, but if Slott doesn't move the runner, they better. Slott hitting 229, just off the disabled list. Fouls it straight back, nothing in one. One strike to Don Slot. Has to be the runner at second base. Second hit given up by Danny Cotts. He misses with a slider. It's one on one. Run home run from Ivan Cal Calderon in the first inning. Take a two nothing lead on those Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field. Mark Gardner will be trying to halt the Expos losing streak. In the air to right field, it is a foul ball and out of play into the Pittsburgh bullpen. And it's two and one. Another two and two now to Don Slot. Two balls and two strikes to him. SP at second base and nobody out. He's high with it, a full count. with SB speed you know you could hit a ground ball with a shortstop and he'd still get the third if it wasn't you know a real hard hit ball little half swing fielded by Cox he throws out slot SB moves up to third base and with one out it'll bring out Jose Lean Lean hitting a 257 Three home runs. He's knocked in 31. See how the Phillies play the infield now with a runner at third base. Dickie Thon moves in. Looks like they're going to play it in with a runner at third base and one out. Yeah, I like that. I don't like conceding runs, especially the bottom of the order. Now, Lean, pretty good little hitter. Just missed for a ball, one and nothing. Lean gets a lot of his hits to right field. He's a good opposite field hitter. And it's two and nothing to Jose Lean. Darren Dalton calling time. He wants a word with Danny Cox. looking very casual in the Phillies dugout with dugout coach Hal Lanier. Lean fouls it back and out of play. It's two balls and a strike to Jose Lean.
Cease the last is at third base with one out here in the second. It's a nothing nothing game. Cox will try to go for a strikeout pitch. Has to be careful though about breaking balls and not bouncing them up there with that runner at third base. Another fastball that he fouled back and out of play. It's still two and two to lean to. center field probably deep enough to score SP Dykstra's throw will be late sacrifice fly by Jose Lean and Pittsburgh is taking a one nothing lead here in the second Cox got that breaking ball up he's thrown two of those in this inning one to SP who doubled off of it and this one is up and right over the the plate. Well, the Pirates have taken a one nothing lead here in the second. The batter, Doug Drabeck, he's hitting a 182. One ball and no strikes. for Drayback. And Drayback, he's always been able to handle the bat pretty well. Picks up the third hit given up by Danny Cox, and that'll bring on Orlando Merced. He just laid, laid the barrel of the bat on that one. Merced grounded back to Danny Cox his first time up. Pirates on top, one nothing. We're in the bottom of the second. One strike to Merced. States is going to be at our hotel tomorrow, way. Yeah, we have with that uh, police convention and all the security that will be around there. That's going to be a very safe place to be tomorrow. Yes, it should be. We will be here to address the fraternal order of police, their national convention here. Little chopper to Charlie Hayes. He's going to have to hurry. He throws it away. Goes into the stands. Going to third base is Dray back and Merced to second. Charlie let the ball play him. He waited on it. He did not charge the ball. And Merced runs pretty well. Now, Hayes has been playing good third base, but this not a good play. They'd have had him. I don't know whether they'd have had him or not. That was going to be close. Yep. Chuck had to avoid the base runner and try to catch the ball. I guess they gave him an infield hit and an error. Well, the scoreboard, I thought, flashed an error, but maybe they gave him a single and an error. I think that's what they did. They've got four hits up there. Here's Jay Bell, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Iron runners at second and third with two outs. One run in. Ah! 
Hard ground ball gobbled up by Mickey Morandini, and that will retire the side. Pittsburgh scores a run in the inning. On three hits, one in Philly air, they leave two. We go to the third inning, it's one nothing Pirates. To you by Ford, bank on your quality plus Ford dealer for great savings during leadership month. We go to the third inning, Pittsburgh leading at one nothing. Our trivia question of the night. Who holds the record of hitting the most home runs in his last major league season? This player hit 29 of them. Probably that Willie Stargell. That's a good guess. Incorrect, however. That Wilbur Dornell Stargell. Mickey Thon hitting a 245. One lifetime is hitless off Doug Brayback. Nothing out of six lifetime. Brayback starts him with a slider. Just about every hitter he started with a breaking ball. A high chop. Bonilla's going to have to hurry. No chance. Ball caroms off the fence down in the right field and Thon. Ends up at second base on a single and an error. Well, Dickey is at second base with nobody out for Danny Cox. Yeah, it took that high hop, and Benia probably should have just stuck this ball in his pocket. He had no chance at all to get Thon. Set over there trying to block it. Real bad throw. Danny Cox now will, has talked it over with Larry Boa. He'll probably be bunting here. Cox hitting an 0-45. Pittsburgh looking for the bunt. Pop it over, Bell and Graybeck. It's a lead pipe sink bunt situation. And he takes it low for a ball, one and nothing. With Merced charging the way he is, there's really only a couple places you can bunt it. Run it hard towards third, make Bonilla field it. If you could, run it hard towards shortstop where there is nobody playing. Jay Bell is over there flirting with second base. Gets the bunt down. Drayback goes to third. Safe there. It is safe all around. A gamble did not pay off by Drayback. Bonilla was not back there. And the Phillies have runners at first and third on a sacrifice fielder's choice. Pirates using a little bad judgment here in this inning. Graybeck had no chance to get Thon. Thon sliding in. It had to be a tag play there, not a force out. Almost That ball almost went into left field. Well, the Phil's runners are at first and third. Nobody out for Lenny Dykstra, who grounded out his first time up. Got some Phillies fans chanting Lenny, Lenny. I guess you're uh, giving up on this trivia question? Yeah. Well, I'll give you a hint. His... Uh, his teammate is in attendance here tonight. Oh. <laughs> there are only 100 ball players here tonight. His teammate is in attendance, and you were visiting with him before the game. I was? Yep. Sitting down where the scouts are sitting. I don't know that, Shin. That Broadway Charlie Wagner was his teammate. 
A splendid splinter. He got it. 29 home runs in his last year of Major League Baseball. How about that? I think the next high and, and player who retired was Mickey Mantle at 18 in his last year. Two balls and a strike to Dykstra. Bills have something going here, and that's three and one, and Drayback is kind of nibbling here, and he's behind Dykstra, three balls and one strike. Well, he can't nibble here. He almost has to, you know, try for a good-sized piece of the plate. This is a great hitting situation for Dykstra. He turned out it, but turned out and fouled down the right field side. It's a full count to Lenny Dykstra. I think he went after ball four. I think it was up and in a little bit. A, a good pitch to hit if you're sitting on a fastball, but that's what you do with an inside pitch. See, that's, and that's up a little bit. Yeah, he really leveled off nicely on it. Full count to Dykstra. Loops a foul left field side. That'll drift out of play. Still three and two. Got a fastball there. I don't think it's a lead pipe sense, though, that he'll get a fastball because uh, Drabeck has pretty good control of that slider. Also throws a curveball and does have a changeup. Dad wide. Lenny walks, and that will load the bases with nobody out for Darren Dalton. After Darren Dalton. This pitch is close. Look at this. Good, good call. It was outside. A little wide. Mickey Thon at third, Danny Cox at second, Lenny Dykstra at first. Nobody out here in the third. Phil's trail one nothing. Dalton, a big hitter here. On the inside corner for a called strike, nothing in one. Dalton could earn his salary here. He's a big spot in the ball game for the Bills in quest of their 14th consecutive win. drive center field caught by Van Slyke. Here comes Dickie Thon. He is safe at home play. Van Slyke, one of the strongest throwing arms in the National League. Got to just up the third base line a little bit. Give Dalton a sacrifice fly. We are tied at one. Yeah, he got it. Didn't quite get it accurate. He's thrown accurately. There are great arms in the Pirates outfield. That really would have been a... In fact, he would have been out. I see. Good slide by Dickey. He slid away from the tag to the inside part of the plate and slot just couldn't quite reach him. So we are tied at one with one out. A field play at third base. He's disallowed. Cox, I know Cox is a pitcher, and you don't expect your pitcher to run much, especially a guy with a bad leg, but he should have been on third because that play was only going to be in one place, a home plate. Cox still at second, and Lenny Dykstra at first with one out and a run across. We are tied at 1-1 here in the third. Wes Chamberlain singled his first time up. One strike to Wes. This is where Wes talks to himself and says, you know, you know, back off, be patient. Chase the bad pitch there. He really gets, you know, determined up there and maybe sometimes too aggressive. Poked into center field. That's going to drop for a hit. No way. Oh, it's a slight. 
Here comes Cox. Here comes Dykstra. Phillies lead it three to one on a rare error by Andy Van Slyke. No way Bo was going to try to score Cox on the ball. He already had him held up. And Van Slyke just evidently took his eye off the ball. He did. He was yeah. looking at the base runner. He didn't know that uh, Cox had been held up, but you're right. Boa had him held all the way. On this after, of course, that ball rolls a long way if you if an outfielder misses it. That's a big base hit for West Chamberlain. And a costly error by Andy Van Slyke. They have given Chamberlain a run batted in, which is surprising because Cox was going to be held all the way. Third ball to John Crutt. Dykstra scoring on the air on Van Slyke and Chamberlain going to second on it. It's a great fielding team Pittsburgh puts out there, and they have really butchered it up in this inning. Two errors in the inning. Phil's on top, three to one. Kickoff try at second base, and Chamberlain gets back. Two errors and one bad judgment. Yeah. So the Phils have taken a 3-1 lead here in the third inning. Chamberlain in second base, one out. Inside the crux. One ball and one strike to John Crutt. He flied out to left his first time up. He fouls it back to the screen. They've changed that scoring to no RBIs. That is the first error of the year for Andy Van Slyke. Ooh. He pops him up. It's foul and playable. Bobby Bonilla. Uh, puts it away in foul ground. Truck is out. That's two down, and that'll bring on Dale Murphy, who singled his first time up. Chamberlain still at second base. The last error made by Andy Van Slyke was on September 20th of last year at Chicago. That was a costly one, especially in light of what John Crutt did. Here's a pitch down and in for a ball, one and nothing. Danny Cox talking it over with Darren Dalton in the Phillies dugout. Very high pop-up in the infield. Who wants it? Orlando Merced, the first baseman, makes the play, and that will retire the side. So the Phillies score three runs in the inning. Just one of them earned. Two honored. There were two hits, two very costly errors, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the third. It's 3-1, Phillies. is the Sonata. It out accelerates Taurus LX. Phillies have three runs, three hits, and one error. Pittsburgh one run, four hits, two errors as we go to the bottom of the third. Travel arranged through U.S. Air. Every time we fly, every mile of sky, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. Andy Van Slyke leads it off for Pittsburgh here in the third. Hit into a fielder's choice his first time up. Bills leading it 3-1. Nice 
Nice grab, John Crock. Good feed to Cox, and Van Slyke is out on one pitch. Nice play by the Crocker, who covers first base extremely well. And he has that bad knee, but he that ball right on the chalk line, and it was hit sharply. Cox has a bad leg, but he got over there in plenty of time. Bobby Bonilla singled his first time up. One ball and no strikes to Bonilla. He shatters his bat into shallow right, and it's going to find open space. He's a base hit for Bonilla. So Bonilla, a broken bat, single to right field. And it will bring out Barry Bonds. And him right on the trademark. As they play him so deep. Nobody can get near the ball. Barry Bonds, Whitey, on May 15th, was hitting 170. Yeah, he's, what, 290? Uh, 293 right now. Yeah. MVP last year. Pretty good shot at it again, I'd say. He's got a shot at it. Dickie Bond can't make the play. Omiya goes to third. Don was trying to do too much with it. Should have just kept it in the infield. It'll be scored a single, and the Pirates have runners at first and third with one out. But Dickey should have kept that ball to the infield. Yeah, he had his body over there. He tried to field it cleanly. Had he fielded it cleanly, he probably would have thrown Bonds out at first. But the ball just got under his glove, really. He didn't have his glove down low enough. Now you expect the Pirates to, you know, that middle of the order to hurt you, but not with a bloop single and a and a high bouncer. So Pittsburgh runners at first and third with one out for Cecil SB. He doubled over the head of West Chamberlain his first time up. Fly ball to West. That's going to be deep enough to score the run. Boney at tags and scores, and it's now a three to two ball game. Phillies lead by a run. Give SB a sacrifice fly. His first RBI since being called up. And we'll bring on Don Slot. Now you have to watch that Bond. He'll, I don't think there's any doubt he'll try to steal the space. He has 35 of them. And he is certainly a threat. center field. That'll be a base hit. Bonds will hold it second. So Slot singles the center. And the Pirates with two men on base and two outs for Jose Lee. That's seven hits the Pirates have picked up but there haven't been too many of them really no. stung. The, the balls that have been hit hard have mostly been caught. Neither team here in the first three innings has distinguished themselves defensively. Vicky Bond did make a superb play in the first inning. And then did not make a good play in this inning. Two men on base and two outs for Lean. He had a sack fly his first time up. Ground ball to Morandini. Mickey juggles, recovers, and throws him out to retire the side. Pittsburgh gets a run in the inning on three hits, no errors. They have now left six through the first three innings. After three, Andy Musser comes your way in the fourth. Bills lead the Buccos three to two. I'm about to ask a real video brief, which will score more points. Eagles' new nacho cheese tortilla chips or uh, the other leading brand. Jack? You're not paying attention to me, Jack. Now you have to try the other leader. For one in the game, and he has had three straight two-hit games. It's the ball to center. See if Van Slyke can run it down. It's hard. Oh. He hung on to 
of that. What a play by Slick. Oh, brother. There's another highlight film play right there. That's what you call perfect timing on a tough play. Well, he, that ball almost slipped out of the webbing of his glove after he hit the fence. Wow. You know, that was that was a double, and that probably would have been a triple because Van Slyke certainly couldn't have chased the ball down. That was a great play. So Slick, who just committed his first error of the year last inning, does his best to atone for it with that one. Now Morandini over one, a ground ball to third. I guess that's a great example there. Why do you why you squeeze that glove hard when you catch the ball? Another great example of why these fences around the National League are padded now and what a difference that makes. Won't be seeing that where we're going next, except a little bit of ivy on the fence at Wrigley Field, but that doesn't make much difference, no. does it? You know, if you if you hit a wall that's not padded that hard, and especially a Wrigley Field wall, which is bricks, Rayback stops it. Another good play. Really? Well, let's let's say that that same ball had happened at Wrigley Field. Uh, you got to play it differently, don't you? Well, that's a home run. Well, yeah, field, but I mean but a ball like that that you're going out, you don't go well, slamming into the fence. Well, you, you do what you have to do to catch it, you know. <laughs> well, in that case, they're carrying Van Slyke yeah, out of here right you. now. You bet you. I think he would have played it the same way, no matter what the fence is. You know, when you go after the ball, you don't really think now, is this ball padded or not? You just go after it. Bond has scored a run following an infield single his last time up. They keep adding 247. Oh, look at this. Now that that is really. I mean, he really took a jolt off that thing. He's lucky he didn't get hurt off the padded wall. Pop up, foul out of play. All that Ivy does in Wrigley Field is is scratch you up, cut you up. It. Uh, Really doesn't push him much. They do have padding on the Wrigley Field wall along the sides. We saw Mike Bale make a tremendous play there one day, just splattering himself all over the wall, trying to catch a ball foul in the bullpen. Well, that wouldn't occur any longer there. The Cubs have a run, by the way. They are trailing Montreal 2-1 now in the bottom of the second inning in a night game at Wrigley. Ground ball for Bell. Jay makes the play, and the Phillies have gone one, two, three for the first time tonight. So we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. It's 3 2 Philly. Oak Pro closure and the Phillies logo perfect for back to school coming up on Sunday, September 1st. Phillies and Braves 135. This is compliments of Campbell's Soups. For all the children 14 and under, call 463 1000 for your tickets. Phillies still lead it by a run. We're in the last of the fourth, and Drabeck, who hit, got to hit his first time up, was leading it off. Two balls, no strikes on Doug. He singled the center field for his 11th hit this year. He's now batting 196. Takes a pretty good, uh, pretty good cut when he, you know, can sit on that fastball. Probably get another one here. It's in every inning for the Pirates. They've left six men on base. Fly ball to shallow right. This one should be caught. Murphy. One down in the fourth. Orlando Merced, one for two tonight. Infield single, infield ground out. 
switch hitter, but a much better batter left-handed. Doesn't get up there right-handed very often. He's platooning with Gary Reedus at first base. Pirates have out-hit the Phillies 7-4. Well, they've been saying all year, Whitey, the Pirates don't have a leadoff hitter, but uh, the combination of Merced and Reedus have done a decent job. Yeah, really. they do. They they certainly get on base. Merced probably a better leadoff hitter than Reedus. Reedus can't hurt you though. Now it's three balls and a strike on Orlando. Beat the Phillies with a home run earlier this year. He takes a whack at this one. High stop by Morandini. Safe. An infield single for the speedy Merced. Two infield singles now in this game. Both of them high bouncers. Good play by Morandini. Had a lot on the throw and a good scoop by Truck. Called accurately, but yeah. it was close. Yeah, he's safe. Now Jay Bell. Jay's been slumping. Tonight he has walked and grounded out, so he is only five for his last 38 times up there. Merced has stolen four bases. He's been caught three times. So again, the Pirates get a hit. They've had hits in every inning. Cox just hasn't been able to get his breaking ball over, and times he has gotten it over, it's usually been in bad spots. I mean, he's been up, and that's a key pitch for him for the slider he throws. Fastball situation again, and he's a pretty good hit and run man. Is Bell? He ought to get a pretty good pitch to hit. Catches the corner. That was a pitcher's pitch there. Two balls and a strike now. Gene Lamont. Everybody says he's going to be the front runner to be the skipper of the new Miami team. Leland says, I hope he gets the job. I'm tired of looking at him. <laughs> Lamont's a, a good man, and he really gets a lot of credit from uh, Jim Leland running this ball club. Merced goes. Pitch hit down the line in right field. It'll be foul out of play to the bullpen. They started Merced with that pitch. Now it's a 2 2 count on Jay Bell. Jimmy Leland, he had uh, a health problem earlier this year. They had to stop a charter flight on the way back from Cincy. They had to make an unscheduled stop in Columbus and get him some medical attention. But it turned out not to be serious. But I understand he has given up smoking once more. There's a ball ripped to left field. Chamberlain can't get it. Merced's being held a third on Bell's double. Hit number nine for Pittsburgh. See, there's that breaking ball up high again, and that hurts Cox. Bullpen action for the Phillies for the first time tonight. Left-hander Steve Searcy is up. 
And no wonder three left-handed batters in a row appearing now for the Pirates. Van Slyke, Bonilla, who would, of course, bat right-handed, were there a left-hander out there, and then Bonds. Van Slyke is 0 for 2. Phillies' one-run lead in jeopardy here as the Pirates have second and third, one out of the inning. Well, you know, after committing an error and allowing a couple of runs in, Slick's going to want to atone for that somehow offensively. That's a fair ball. Nice stop by Kruk. They get the out. Run scores. Tie game. The third base is Bell. Great play by Kruk. Why was it ever? He saved. He saved an extra base hit there and another run. This ball was belted. Watch Kruk diving. We've seen we've seen some tremendous plays in this game and some not so tremendous, but unbelievable. Bonilla tops one toward Morandini. He's going to be out. And down go the Pirates. They tie the game, but once again, it could have been worse. One run, two hits, one man left on base after four. Phillies three, Pittsburgh three. Then if you buy any new 1992 season ticket plan, you'll get the opening night free. Call 463-5000 for more information on the new mini plan. Well, obviously, Danny Cox is going to remain in the ballgame. It's tied. He's batting here to lead off the fifth. He was safe on a sacrifice fielder's choice and scored a run last dinner in the third inning. Here's a guy who has bad wheels, has not been able to run much, and tonight he's made it all the way around the bases, and he's covered on a couple of plays at first base. Ball and two strikes on Cox. High bouncer toward lean. Cox is out. Let's pause here for station identification. The Phillies Television Network. WTXF, Fox 29 in Philadelphia. Cubs have come back for three in the bottom of the third to take a 5-2 lead over Montreal. A three-run home run by Andre Dawson. Dykstra. Dykstra, 0 for 1 with a walk and a run. Phillies are 18 and 7 since Lenny returned to the lineup. Another play for Lean. Bobbles it, but has the arm and the time to make the play. Archer hit that ball sharply. Got the Lean in a hurry. That's another good play. That's right, that was a that was a bullet. That Astro turf hop. Dribble it once and you can still make the play. Darren Dalton gets in the box, officially 0 for 1. He got a run in on a sacrifice fly, which was a line drive to center. Takes a strike. Right here, Drabeck bids to put the Phillies down in order for the second inning in a row. Drabeck pulls Darren with his breaking ball, nothing in two. Danny Cox has struggled tonight. Cox has given up nine hits, but he's in a 3-3 tie. Two 
balls and two strikes on Darren. He hits the ball high to right field, but it's going to stay in the park. Espy puts it away, and Dalton is out. Down go the Phillies. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning, 3-3. Three, three. Good evening from the WROI Traffic Copter. Believe it or not, everything, everywhere is clear. Back with more right after this. Right now, during Roy Rogers' Chicken Celebration, get two pieces of our great-tasting fresh fried chicken and a biscuit for only $1.99 or eight pieces for just $5.99. But hurry in, because before you know it, the party will be over. We're back, and all of a sudden, it's bumper to bumper all around town. And it looks like it's all heading towards, well, Roy Rogers. Hey, could we set this baby down on the roof? Power Stick Antiperspirant. It excels with 50% more odor and wetness fighters per stroke for 24-hour control that ordinary deodorant sticks just can't beat. Power Stick for 24-hour control. Coming up tonight on the 10 o'clock news, according to the state and federal governments, this is not a disaster. So what are Upper Darby businesses going to do? Jacqueline Bolden reports on the search for financial assistance. What does a 13-game winning streak do for the sale of Phillies merchandise? Victor Livingston reports on the bullish baseball market. And turn about his fair play, Bruce Willis gets his turn on a controversial magazine cover. I'm Jill Chernikoff. I'm Lee McCarthy. For all the day's news, join us tonight after the Phillies game. Sure, one man doesn't make a team, but if you had to pick one, who would you pick? 3-3 three, three game. None of the Pirates' runs have scored on hits. They got their first one on a sacrifice fly by Jose Lean. The Phillies came back for three in the third, a couple of them scoring on errors, but Darren Dalton did pick up an RBI, but a big error that allowed two runs to score by the center fielder. Andy Van Slyke. Then the Pirates came back with one in the third. RBI, sacrifice fly RBI by Espy. And that tying run in the fourth inning on an infield ground out by Van Slyke. Barry Bonds leads off the fifth inning. It's a 3-3 game. Bonds one for two, fly to center. And a single bounced up the middle. The inning starts with the Phillies bullpen up as Danny Cox has been in continual trouble tonight. Some good looking jewelry there. He comes to the ballpark in a Brinks truck, I believe. Yeah, you'd want to have a little protection, wouldn't you? Ball three. So Cox battles back to a full count. And he swung at ball four and gets himself a base hit. Bond singles to center field, and of course he used to be a leadoff hitter, so he is a threat to run 35 stolen bases, fifth in the league. And hit number 10 for Pittsburgh. And they just reached out on that pitch out, high and away. Right through the middle. It's in every inning for Pittsburgh. Here's Espy. Cecil has doubled, scoring a run, and then he knocked in a run on a sacrifice fly. <laughs> Runner's going. He got him. He is out. Beauty. Little delay by Bonds in taking off, and the ball didn't roll very far from Dalton, so he's out. Now he decided to run too late. 
The Dutch was lucky the ball bounced right under him. Nice tag there by Dickie Thon. Well, that takes a little, a lot of heat off Danny Cox. Harry Bond is an excellent base runner most of the time. Yeah, fifth in the league. That's the tenth time he's been caught. Espy pops up. Dickie Thon wants this one. Two out. I don't think they call out a attempted steal, do they? Catcher Don the ball was in the dirt, and I think he, you know he was trying. If, if he'd have made it, it'd have been a it'd have been a wild pitch, I believe. So I don't think that was going to be caught a uh, caught stealing. Don Slot off the disabled list today. He is one for two. Grounded one back to the mound and single to center field. There's Mike Lavalier. Normally Mike would be catching on a night like this with a right hander on the mound for the Phillies but the skipper Jim Leland told him after the ball game last night that he would be rested. They've been facing a lot of right handed pitching so Leland just wanted to give him the night off and also get slot back in there. Slot's been on the DL. All three, three and zero oh on slot. There's the injured third baseman Jeff King. He is still on the DL. He's had a bad back. Slot walks. Second walk given up by Cox. Second baseman Jose Lee. There's not a, that's not a bad walk if you get leaned out. You have the pitcher leading off the next inning again. Leaned is a hard guy for the Phillies to get out. The sacrificed fly tonight to drive in one run, grounded out to second. Against the Phillies, he's 309 lifetime. Good second baseman. Brian Sandberg, of course, seems to have a lock on that gold glove. Once you win it and you don't deteriorate, of course, the award tends to stay with you. And that's got to frustrate, frustrate some other good fielding second baseman who come along, like Lean's in that category right now. And Johnny Padres wondering, you know, exactly what the Phillies can count on from Cox here because he has struggled from the opening of this ball game. All of a sudden, he's wild low. I think that pitch was low. I do, too, yeah. That's a foul ball strike two and one now. The count on lean. The thing about Danny Cox, he, he doesn't have his great breaking ball tonight. He's a battler. That's one of the reasons I think he's still out there. Line drive to the right field corner. That's going to be trouble. Don Slot's going to be sent around. Morandini's relay late. Pirates take the lead. I guess that walk did hurt. I think that's going to be a triple. Right out over the plate. Didn't really get a good bounce out there for Murphy. Rolled all the way around that corner and Slot, who really doesn't run that well, scores easily. Jim Fergosi on his way out to the mound now. And he's going to go get Danny Cox. So the string of 14 consecutive games where the Phillies starter has gone through the sixth inning comes to an end tonight as Steve Searcy comes on here in the fifth. Pitching change in Pittsburgh. The Pirates are ahead four to three. We'll be right back. A 
center Steve Searcy comes into his fifth ball game for the Phillies. Searcy is one and one, 5.79 earned run average for the left-hander who was picked up out of the Detroit Tiger chain after he was given his free agency. He was the Tigers' third round draft choice in 85 after attending the University of Tennessee. Steve is 27 years of age and still considered a rookie. Well, the Pirates have taken the lead four to three, and they have leaned at third base now with Drabeck coming up. Drabeck is one for two in the ball game. Pirates have scored single runs in four consecutive innings. Balls and two strikes on Drabeck. Searcy, 6'4, excuse me, 6'1, I should say, 195 pounds, born in Knoxville, Tennessee. First made his Major League debut with the Tigers in 1988. All third strike, so Searcy comes in to get Drabeck to put a finish to it. First Pirate strikeout in the ballgame. But Pittsburgh takes the lead. One run, two hits, and one man left on base. And after 5 4 3, Bucko. Welcome to Mountain Man 101. Let's begin. This is a Mountain Man. Notice his love of great natural beauty, his instinctive resourcefulness, his healthy respect for a fine pair of cowboy boots. However, the easiest way to identify a mountain man is to look at his hands, which will no doubt be holding a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and learn to live life as a man among men. The deals are hot. During Ford's factory authorized clearance, save big money on the hot moving escort get closeout savings on taurus and taurus wagon hurry and get the deal of the year on probe thunderbird even the sleek new crown victoria it's been a seesaw game this is the second time the phillies have been behind by a run the pirates got down by two runs at one point so both teams have seen leads disappear tonight but we're only in the sixth inning of a ball game led by pittsburgh four to three Jimmy Leland out talking with uh, Bruce Fremming between innings. But there are no changes for the Pirates, and Jimmy has not given up smoking, has he? We caught him. Well, he said he was going to give it up, but I guess saying it and doing it are two different things. Chamberlain leads off the inning. Wes is two for two, a pair of singles, and he has a stolen base. Doug Graybeck does not have a strikeout tonight. Danny Cox didn't have a strikeout. Searcy came in and struck out the first and only battery saw. Baltimore beat Texas 4-3, scoring in the 12th inning in game one of their doubleheader. Homer by Steve Bouchelle for Texas in that ball game. But the Orioles scored in the bottom of the 12th to claim game one, 4-3. Two balls and a strike on Chamberlain. He'll be followed by Kruk and Murphy. Phillies in the sixth. to left field but there's room for Bonds well, he just missed that ball just missed it First base is John brought a smile to Wes's face I mean 
had the swing for it, had the pitch for it. Raybeck got away with one there. Raybeck has surrendered 11 home runs, most on the Pirates staff. John Crock fly ball to left, foul ball to third, 0 for 2. Swing for the fence. That curve ball and dropped out of the strike zone. Down the left field line, foul, out of play. 0-2 on Kruk. Well, the Phillies being challenged here tonight. They haven't been able to beat the Pirates this year, and if they are to win their 14th in a row, it'll have to be a come-from-behinder, as many of them in the streak have been. Jim Fergosi said that Last night's ball game was one of the best ball games he has seen for a long time. You know, there were no lineup changes last night. The nine guys that started the game for each team went the whole way. Crock gets a one out single. Hit number five for the Phillies. Right trying to slip that fastball by Crock. And he laid it right in that hole between. First and second. Here's Murphy. Dale is one for two tonight. It was a single. Murphy, 10 hits in his last 26 at bats. Struck is safe, but it was closer than it should have been. Truck spun his wheels a little bit on that dirt out there. See that right foot slip? He, he was almost out. Some loose dirt. has had problems this year it's when he hasn't been able to get ahead of the hitters like most pitchers he doesn't have overpowering stuff here's ahead of Murphy nothing in two He's paying attention to him, that's for sure. Don Slot checks the dugout. That's low, one and two. Jim Leland certainly isn't a guy who over manages. I mean, he really. Turns the players loose, does not have a lot of rules, doesn't have a lot of meetings. And boy, he really set things straight this year when he challenged Barry Bonds in spring training. That's a significant item for the Pirates this year. Just wanted everybody to know who was running the ball club, I guess. And they found out. Close again. Back stepping off or Murphy getting time, one or the other. Murph flinched. A bouncer will make the play at second, and that's the out. 
two outs in the inning with Murphy safe at first on a fielder's choice. Charlie Hayes. Third baseman Charlie Hayes. They hop for Bell and knew they'd get the force. Cuff really went in on a hard slide. St. Louis scored two in the third to lead the Mets two to nothing. Charlie Hayes had a two home run game in this ballpark last year. Tonight Charlie is grounded into a double play and then it was his ball on which Van Slyke made that leaping grab into the padding in right center field. Two or nothing. Gray Beck has given up five hits. But only one walk. And yes, that walk scored. Up the middle, but Bell's got it. The backhand flip to lean. And the Phillies are out in the sixth. No runs, one hit, one left. Go to the bottom half, and it's 4-3 Pittsburgh. Your Dodge dealer will now illustrate package savings. Get $2,700 worth of popular options on select full-size Dodge pickups at no extra charge. Like power windows, air conditioning, intermittent wipers, 30-gallon fuel tank, and more. Plus $1,500 cash back for a total savings of $4,200. But hurry before your Dodge package savings get away. Free breakage guarantee. But you never know. Only Pearl will repair or replace your broken glasses free for one full year, no matter how they break. Have you got your pearls on? They're not celebrities, they're not millionaires, they're smart and thrifty. How do they do it? I didn't pay a lot for a muffler at Meineke. You're not gonna pay a lot for a muffler at Meineke Discount Mufflers. The weekday breakfast bar at Bob's Big Boy. It's quick, it's all you can eat, and it's only $3.99. So no matter what it takes to get you out of bed, it's worth it. Phillies baseball brought to you in part by Core State's First Pennsylvania Bank. We believe in the power of relationships. And by Dodge. Rediscover American values at your local Dodge dealer where it's Advantage Dodge. Pirates by a run, 4-3, bottom half of the sixth inning. They're at the top of the batting order, and something you don't see often, that's Merced batting right-handed. Going to keep him in the ball game. Be the start of a game against the left-hander, they'd have, they'd have Reedus out there, or if they'd be behind, they'd have Reedus out there. As a right-handed batter, Merced is 8 for 35, 229. So he has 240-some at bats left-handed and 35 right-handed. Three, three and one. Well, the second batter, Searcy, is faced. He came in to strike out Rayback, ending the fifth inning with a runner at third base. A bouncer, Dickie Thon, picks it up. Merced is out, one down on the sixth. Here's Jay Bell. He's been troublesome tonight. He has walked, rounded out, and doubled. Pirates have scored in four consecutive innings. One run in the second, third, fourth, and fifth.
Bell not hitting a whole lot lately. We mentioned he's one for two tonight, but that still makes him just six for his last 39. That's about 150. Neil Heaton. Fire the bullpen. A jammer foul, two and two on Bell. Andy Van Slyke on deck. Doug Graybeck has been tough as usual. Only given up the one earned run. Still anybody's ball game. Bell hits a high fly. Plenty of room for Chamberlain and time because it's way up there. Two out. Van Slyke 0 for 3. Doesn't have the ball out of the infield yet, but he does have an RBI on one of his sharply hit ground outs. Van Slyke first came up with the Cardinals. They platooned him and he never faced left handed pitching at that point. Shows you sometimes how a guy has to overcome an early reputation. You know they platooned uh, Willie Stardwell when he first came up. Mm. Seems funny looking back on that. Breaking ball for a strike. It's one and two on Van Slyke. Mickey Morandini, an example of a guy trying to fight his way out of that mold right now. And of course, Mickey in his first year in the major league, so a long time to go. Murphy coming on. Makes the play, and for the first time tonight, the Pirates go out one, two, three. After six innings, Pittsburgh four, Phillies three. Labor Day, find a Bud Man inside packages of Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft. Bud Man! You big lug. You could have had a brand spanking new raft. Chins up, men. Here comes a winner. Yowza. Mm. Hey. You could win one of thousands of prizes, oh. including sailboats. Man, that one really hurt. Hmm. Give me three. Heads up, man. Somebody just snapped your 12 pack. What? <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> man. Back in 79, I bought my first Honda. Then in 83, I bought another Honda and gave the 79 to my wife. Then in 86, I bought another Honda, gave the 83 to my wife, and she gave the 79 to our daughter. And today... I just bought a shiny new Honda so my husband could keep the 86. Well, I just know how much it means to you, honey. Buy a 1991 Honda Accord today and start your own family tradition. No matter what sport suits your fancy, you can suit up for less at the Sports Authority. Especially on miters, soccer cleats, balls, gloves, and more. Plus, Apex One winwear and active separates with NFL and college logos. In fact, we can make an athlete out of just about anybody. Are you sure this is how Bo Jackson got started? The Sports Authority. You've never seen anything quite like it. Seventh inning baseball, Harry Callis, Harry. All right, thanks, Rich, and it's time for our Bud Batters box inning. Isidore Barkin of Huntington Valley is our designated Bud Batter tonight. Budweiser and Fox 29 will name a designated Bud Batter before the seventh inning of every Phillies telecast on Fox 29. Any Philly player hits a home run during the seventh inning, the designated Bud Batter earns $100 immediately and shares at a $10,000 bonus pool given out at the end of the season. If a Philly gets on base, the designated Bud Batter will win a Budweiser jacket and baseball cap if you're 21 or older. Send your name and address and telephone number to Bud Batter's box, 
Post Office Box 13229, St. Louis, Missouri, 63157. We'll draw a name before every telecast from among the fans who write in. Mickey Morandini leads it off. He has been up twice. Twice he has grounded out. And he slaps a base hit to right field. Morandini, a leadoff base runner, and that'll bring on Dickie Thon. That's hit number six for the Phillies off Doug Drayback. Shortstop, Dickie Thon. Dickie Thon has singled and scored a run, and he has grounded his short. Dave Hollins has moved into the on-deck circle to bat for Steve Searcy. Now Don Slot is coming out, and so is manager Jim Leland. Well, he's not about to make a pitching change. He, I guess he wants to talk over a little strategy here. Bob Kipper is a left-hander. Roger Mason is the right-hander in the Pittsburgh bullpen. I don't think the Pirates will be looking for a bunt. I don't think no, the Phillies will so. be bunting now. Mickey Morandini, first base, and nobody out here in the seventh. Phillies trail 4-3. Outside corner, a tough pitch called strike to Dickie Thon. 